I want to continue our discussion on instance variables and I want to talk about how to access those instance variables and to do that I've created two classes one called student 101 and the other student 101 runner and inside of the student 101 class I've created three instance variables name age and GPA and in order to access name age and GPA inside of the student 101 runner I'm going to have to create an object of student 101 and so I do that by saying student 101 stu equals new student 101 now that I've created the object, I can access directly the instance variables. And I do that by saying stu.name, stu.age, stu.gpa. And so you can see that I am just trying to find out what is the name, age, and GPA. And this may seem a little bit odd to you using the object and a variable there as opposed to a method. But I assure you, in this case, it is perfectly legal. But there is a reason why you haven't seen this very often. I go ahead and access those variables and I have them inside of system out print line statements so I'm going to print them out and it would print out null 0 and 0, 0.0 because they're instance variables Java is going to give them default values for a string it would be null for an int it would be 0 and for GPA it would be 0, 0.0 so that's why we get the output that we do not only can I access them to read them but what if I wanted to access them in order to change them and that's what I'm doing right here. I'm saying stu.name, stu.age, stu.gpa, and I'm setting them to Bob 21 and 3.5. Does this work? Absolutely it does. It goes into the class and it changes those values to Bob 21 and 3.5. Well, let's just guarantee that this works by printing out the values again using the exact same code above. And so I do that instead of printing null, 0, and 0, 0.0 again, I get Bob 21 and 3.5. So can we access name, age, and GPA directly? Under these circumstances, yes. But I want to tell you why you don't see this very often. is because you're not supposed to be able to access instance variables like this. First, let's just explain how to take these three instance variables off limits. And we do that by adding the keyword private in front of them. So we'd say private string name, private int age, and private double GPA. And so what, in effect, this is doing is it's creating a wall between name, age, and GPA and any other class that might want to access them. So if we try to do what we did before, and that is access name, age, and GPA directly, as I'm trying to do in the code right there, what I would do is I would run into that wall right there created by the keyword private. And the output would be an error saying name, age, and GPA have private access. And so what is private access? As stated earlier, it's strictly for use inside of the class that it's in. Only members of the Student 101 class can access name, age, and GPA. So now that we've taken them off limits, let's just talk a second about why we would take them off limits. The reason is information hiding or encapsulation. We don't want people to know how our classes are implemented. What we want are people to be able to look at our public interface and see how they can use the class, but not how the class works. And that idea is called information hiding. So now that the information has been sufficiently hidden, what if we do want to grant access or even limited access, at least give the user the ability to read name, age, and GPA? Could we do that? Well, yes, yes, we could. We could do that through something called accessor methods. And what accessor methods do is they grant read access to the instance variables of a class. And you can see that they're all non-void methods. Because they're in the same class as student 101, they have access to the instance variables name, age, and GPA. And you'll notice one thing about all three of them, and I did it on purpose, is that I added the word get in front of the method name. The word get is there oftentimes with accessor methods because that's exactly what they do. They get some kind of information from the class. And so now that we have our wall up, we understand what the keyword private does. It's creating that wall. Let's see how we can get reading access to our instance variables and see if the accessor methods that we wrote get us around the wall. And they do exactly that. Instead of saying stu.name, we would say stu.getName, stu.getAge, stu.getGPA for each of the three variables. And now, if we were to run it, we would get null, 0, and 0, 0.0, which is exactly what we want. So accessor methods allow us to access name, age, and GPA.
just for the purpose of seeing what are the states of name, age, and GPA currently in. Now, what I've done is I've consolidated those three, get name, get age, and get GPA. The way that I've written them is completely fine. I just wanted to save some space, so I've kind of shrunk them down, but they work exactly the same way they do in the previous example. Creating this wall around name, age, and GPA not only limited our access of reading what the values are, it also limited our access of writing to name, age, and GPA. Because what we did earlier is we said stew.name equals Bob. And if we tried to do that right now, accessing them directly like that, again, we would hit our wall and our request would end up in an error saying name, age, and GPA have private access. So just like there was a method way to get around the wall to access them, there is a method way to not only access them, but change what their state is, change what their value is. And so we're going to do that using what we call mutator methods. And what mutator methods do is they grant right access to instance variables. And you can see that all three of them there, set GPA, set name, and set age, are all void methods. And they also all have parameters, double G, string N, int A. And the reason for the parameters are, if you're going to set something or change your instance variables, you have to have what value am I changing it to? So G, N, and A would be the values that we'd want to change the instance variables to. And also, just like oftentimes accessor methods start with the word get, oftentimes mutator methods start with the word set. And so I have set GPA, set name, and set age. And so now let's see if this is going to work to get around our wall and change the values. And so instead of saying stew.name equals Bob, we would say stew.setName Bob, stew.setAge21, and stew.setGPA to change the three instance variables. And in order to test if it works, we're going to use our get methods again and see what the output is. The output is going to be null, 0, 0.0, .0 Bob, 21, and 3.5. The first three lines of output come from these three lines, and the last three lines of output come from these three lines after the instance variable state has been changed. So now we've looked at both mutator and accessor methods. And accessor methods start with the word get, oftentimes mutator with the word set. So sometimes instead of being called accessor and mutator methods, they're called getters and setters. One last advantage that I want to show for having to create mutator and accessor methods is what if I took away the mutator methods or declared them private? What would this do for a class? Well, think about it. Let's say that you had a game and you had hit points, experience points, and score. Do you want users to be able to see what their hit points are, what their experience points are, and what the score is? Yes. Do you necessarily want them to be able to directly change those three values? I mean, the game probably wouldn't be as fun or as challenging if someone went in and said, I'm going to go set the hit points to a really high number, or I'm going to set my experience points way off the charts, or my score I'm going to set off way off the charts so that I can get the highest score in the game. Well, no, you don't want them to be able to set them, but you do want them to be able to access those values. So this might be a case where you would just have accessor methods that are public and either you wouldn't have mutator methods or if you did have mutator methods they would most likely be private and you see if we kept the values as before name age and gpa with direct access we couldn't delineate between just granting read access and just granting writing access but with mutators and accessors we can do exactly that let's bring this all together all of your instance variables in a class should be private why should they be private? Data hiding is the main reason. We don't want people to see our implementation. We just want them to know that if they use this method, it's going to work correctly. Because we have hidden the data, now no one outside the class can access them. Well, that's where accessor and mutators come in. Accessor methods allow an outside class to just read instance variables and see what their current state is. What are their values? And oftentimes, those accessor methods are going to start with the word get, and you will hear them called getters. The second half of that are mutator methods, and they allow an outside class to write to instance variables. 
they can access them and then change what their values are. So I don't like the name Bob, so I'm going to change it to Robert. Or I don't like the age 21 because I'm really 45, and so I change it to 45. And those mutator methods often have the word set inside of them and are called setters. So you can have getters, setters, accessor, mutator, however you would like to refer to them. A key concept in object-oriented programming is the idea of encapsulation, and something that goes along with that is the data hiding of instance variables. And understanding why we hide the data is important, but once the data is hidden, it's also equally important to say, how do we then grant access to others who are trying to use our class? And so this video was all about granting that access through accessor and mutator methods. Being able to write and understand these concepts will go a long way in understanding your code and other people's code better. Thank you so much for watching the video. If you liked the video, please do click like below. If you want to see more videos like this, please do subscribe to the channel. Truly, thanks again for watching.